Hello, it's been a while. Um, so, I think the big thing for the current energies right now is there's a lot of water and there's a lot of earth energy. And specifically, we've had, for the last two weeks or so, um, Sun, Mars, and Mercury all in Scorpio opposite Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. So what, what does this mean? It means basically two things majorly. Um, it means on the one hand, we've had a lot of emotional energy. We are in the kind of general time of the year during Scorpio season every year that we go really deep into our emotions. Um, in a way, even with Cancer or Pisces, this is more about going deep, whereas like Cancer and Pisces are different kinds of emotional seasons. So this year is especially deep because Mercury and Mars are, have also been in Scorpio. That doesn't happen every year. Uh, Mars being in Scorpio as well as Sun in Scorpio, I, I don't know off the top of my head how many years in between kind of this kind of uh, seasons, but it's it, it can be a long time. I know two years ago we experienced it, um, but you know, in a couple years, we may not experience it for another like 20 years, you know what I mean? So long story short, um, this is a really wonderful opportunity. Now, let me be clear. It's, it can be very painful. <laughs> we'll get to that. But the positive part of this is even the pain that we feel, the fear that we feel. And what does fear and pain go hand in hand? Because pain makes us feel fear, whether it's an emotional pain, a mental pain, a physical pain, a spiritual pain, pain um, those pains yield fear. And then that fear, what is fear? It's fear of more pain. Oh, don't want that to happen because I remember when that happened before. It's, it's a part of life and it's not necessarily bad in and of itself. But when we don't really understand our fears, when we don't go to the source of the pain and heal it through awareness, through practice and implementing that awareness through self-love and self-care, through making breakthroughs, making these transformations, which all is on offer at this time and will continue to be for the rest of the Scorpio season for the remaining 18 days or so of this season, or 17 days about. Especially, I would say, for the next week and a half majorly because Mercury is going to be leaving into uh, Sagittarius in probably about a week. I don't know the exact day off the top of my head. But long story short, um, this is such an amazing opportunity to go to the source of our fears and to talk about our fears. There's that Mercury influence and to be able to make breakthroughs. Um, this is an example. Well, let me say on the challenging side of this, first of all, facing our fears is never fun <laughs> as much as it's liberating and enlightening and healing and clarifying. And we let go of so much. Um, because as human beings, we can hold on to our fears so much. And oftentimes, the other side of fear gives us things that we've always wanted, always needed. But because of that fear, we didn't, you know, we weren't able to access that. So there's not to mention fear drains us, you know, how many hours of our lives, how many cumulative hours put together, how many days, how many weeks, you know, how many months, you know, it depends on the person, life experience, but and energies. But we all struggle with fear. How much do we give in to our fear in life? Especially coupled with anxiety. Um, which, you know, those things go hand in hand. Oh, I, re I remember a really good meme. I can't think of the exact words. But it's like in anxiety is when you live, live in the future. Depression is when you live in the past. And that's kind of a generalization. But when there's fear of the future, oh, is this going to happen? I don't want that to happen. Anxiety. And we have, we've had Venus and Virgo. Again, I apologize. This is a lot has been going on here. Um, so I, I've been meaning to make a video for a while, but in any case, this is the update for where we are and where we'll be for the near future. But Venus has been in Virgo. It's actually nearing the end of it. Um, I th in a couple of days, I don't know exactly when, maybe three or four days from now, it'll move on into Libra. Um, but that Venus in Virgo has is added a lot of anxiety to the situation. Although again, there's great things about that energy, of course. We'll, we'll get into that and how that plays into all this in a moment. But that is a challenging energy. 
So as much as all this Scorpio is actually quite smooth, it's, it is quite direct in helping us to get to, to transform in some way. Like, okay, I'm feeling fear. How do I move through the fear? Oh, that's how, okay, that's how I'm, I need to say, you know, it, it helps us to have the conversations we need to have to gain in the information that we need to have. That's all the Mercury in Scorpio, <coughs> excuse me. But the Mars transiting Scorpio is helping us with the action too. So it's helping us to put our words into action. It's helping us to gain information or give information to others to help them to put action forth to be able to transform. Again, it's a wonderful opportunity. And these kind of transformations are incredible because Jupiter's opposite, uh, Jupiter and Uranus are involved. We'll get to that in a moment. But as per the Venus and Virgo, there can be, again, the challenging side of that is there's there can be a lot of anxiety. So let's focus on the positive side of this. What, what is on offer in, in addition to what I was saying about the emotional transformations, letting go of fears, uh, getting to the heart of fears, being able to talk about it, to free ourselves. Again, there's such an amazing opportunity here because Jupiter and Uranus are in Taurus. That's helping us to break out of our previous confinement of fear in a novel way, in a life-changing way, in a way that helps us to expand and grow our consciousness and our opportunities, our, our, that's the goodness of life. Um, and in a very tangible way. I mean, it's, it's tricky to like, you know, not tangible necessarily with our fingers, but we feel it in our hearts, we feel it in our bodies. When we break through, you know, not only breaking through fear, but also this is the other side of all of the Scorpio energy is breaking through again with all that action and focus, um, breaking through with something that we're really passionate about, that we really care about. You know, just again, as an example, um, I finally, all year round, all, all year round, all year long, I've been dealing with this one section of 1500 words out of, um, 128,000 words or something for my first book, right? And I thought for sure I would be done by now. Like I've been thinking for the last four years, but I, I, I'm, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was like, yes, okay. I finally resolved that 1500 words that I've been thinking about and agonizing over all year round. Um, shout out to my editor, Eleanor, too. Incredibly helpful. Um, but part of it has also just been what I've had to go through in my consciousness and think about and and review over the course of months, over the course of this entire year. So again, this isn't, none of my examples are ever just about me. This is a parallel for everybody to think about in their own lives of what, what is it that I'm breaking through to the other side? You know, shout out also The Doors, my, one of my favorite bands, is one of my favorite songs, Break On Through The Other Side, uh, uh, Jim Morrison, Venus, and Scorpio. But yeah, what, in a positive, well, it's all positive, but like, what about I'm breaking free from negativity, which again is wonderfully positive, but also what are we pa and passionate about? What are we getting done? What are we moving forward, etc. cetera? Um, and, and that's a really wonderful, exciting thing too. So this is a good opportunity for us to look at both is, okay, what are we really passionate about? And also what are we afraid of? How, what do we need to resolve? How do we need to heal? Because both of these things, because Jupiter and Uranus are involved, Opsal, the Scorpio energy is helping us to level up in an amazing way, truly a life changing way. Um, and again, I know astrologers tend to lose their shit over everything. Like, oh my God. like, truly, this is an amazing opportunity because Uranus and Jupiter are outer planets. So this is bringing out major, it's a culmination in, in a, uh, for major cycles, as well as sowing the seeds for continued growth with these major cycles. So that's very exciting. And I think the, the benefit of that Venus and Virgo there is Venus and Virgo is very health conscious, uh, physical as well as mental. So this is a great, the last couple of weeks and, you know, for the next couple of weeks even, but especially like we all can resolve or we all can think about this if for the last couple of weeks, how have I healed myself in some way? How have I bettered myself in some way? How have I been more conscious of my well-being, physical, mental, emotional? And right here, right now, which is the key really with facing our fears is just like, no, 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 not one day. No, 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 not burying it pretending it doesn't exist like now just what what is it let's get through it you know part of it's also experiences that we're going to be experiencing and we have been experiencing um but but yeah and we are in the the kind of i mean these conjun uh, conjunctions and also oppositions are going on for the next couple of weeks but we've also kind of seen the the flare up of it because we had the full moon almost exactly a week ago so that is helped because you know for uh, for other people this could be useful, but this last week has been extremely difficult for me. Um, we've had a lot of challenging money things going on for like four months now. I mean, just like one after the other. And it, they're all 
superficial, right? Like money is, is just more importantly the energy of like ourselves. Okay, again, like how do I work through my fears to be able to work a job that I love to make more money? You know what I mean? It's like get to the core, the money works out, it's fine. But for anybody else who's experiencing this, it's you know, not a given that people are experiencing things in the exact same way, but we had Venus retrograde, classic for a challenge with money um for months like late july august into even the rest of september because the venus retrograde uh, shadow period and then we had venus opposite saturn classic challenge for money uh just like constriction right and and i was like oh cool we're getting into november and all that's done and it's like oh right venus is opposite neptune so for this last week i've had like thousands of dollars of unexpected car repairs that have been deeply stressful but again more important so if you are experiencing money stuff like i've been experiencing more importantly go in deeper and it's okay why what's the fear here you know and I, i'm not going to get too personal because it has to do with family and that's not fair to talk about family stuff but basically there's deep rooted fears about money that runs through my family i mean back generations and i think anybody who has a relative who's who lived through the great depression you know there's things that are carried on that it's like you got to kind of shake off and really look at and inspect and reflect and it's like okay like yeah money is important you gotta have, have money to live and whatnot to survive but um there's fear messes everything up so how do we approach this without fear how do we again also in a positive sense how can i make through make breakthroughs and move forward etc so for example with the book you know it's like i mean it's a, a labor of love but it's also key for me to be able to move forward because there's so many videos i want to do but i i just the energy is not right to do them yet i need to get the book done and do them after that's like 108 videos five to ten minute videos that i'm eager to get going on they're just gonna pop out just like at the beginning of my channel um but yeah anyways long story short um if you are experiencing money stuff just go deeper just go deeper just like i had to do this last week i had to really talk myself through my inner child with all these kind of fears and it turned out everything was fine so i was like yeah okay cool sometimes we need help from loved ones and and that's the beauty of this time period also is venus opposite neptune is a time period of helping other people as they need be because everybody a Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin lyric is coming to mind from one of my favorite songs, Friends, um, off their third album. It's like, um, I'm paraphrasing, but basically you have to help. If I could hear the music, like it would snap right there. But anyways, long story short, the lyric is like, help other people because at some point you're going to need help too. So if you're experiencing that, like I've been experiencing that, you know, that time period is passing on. And no matter what you've been experiencing, again, fear, get through the fear. And one last thing about this and that's pretty much the main thing for the energies out there but mars conjunct mercury and sun can be a time of letting anger get the best of you and why do we feel anger because we feel fear why do we feel fear because of the pain so again going back to the source being able to talk about it with somebody who is emotionally aware and empathetic helps tremendously being able to move through things emotionally that's what these time periods are all about but yeah so if you feel yourself I, there have been times where i've had a little bit of flare-up of anger especially playing video games or something and then i'll just start laughing at myself I'm like oh, i'm being fucking stupid <laughs> so just keep that in mind during this time period is yes the energies are amazing for transformation the misuse of these same energies could potentially lead to like waging war <sighs> God, I mean, speaking, that's, I didn't even think about talking about that today, but we will talk about that. It's very important too. Um, we'll get to that. What has happened? Well, we'll get into that. Um, and how to work with these current energies to, uh, and that's basically what, like finishing up what I was just saying is to be able to not lose focus on our own lives and what we can control because we can't control other people. We can't control what's going on in the world. We'll, we'll get into the world stuff in a moment. But, um, yeah, just if you feel yourself getting angry in the next couple of weeks, just breathe, <laughs> breathe, breathe. It's not the end of the world. It's not life or death. Um, so just keep that in perspective. Lastly, for today, um, so Saturn has been in Pisces since February. Saturn just went direct. This is also something that's very helpful. We still have Saturn in the post-retrograde shadow period for several months, probably into January or something, but it something not being direct, especially in the outer planet, is already a major shift forward, um, even if it's not quite like 
full steam ahead forward, it's still moving forward. So um, Saturn and Pisces is a time period of about two and a half years. So we've been about nine months into it at this point. So we still got another about two years or so. And um, it's the resolution period of a 30 year cycle for all of us around the entire world. Um, it started, I'm trying to remember when this cycle started. It must have been a couple years after I was born. It was <clears throat> 1994, 94, 95, maybe 95, something like that. Um, which makes sense because, yeah, 30 years from there is is uh, 2025 which is when Saturn will move into Aries. I'll still retrograde a bit but basically 2025 and then especially 2026 so when this moves forward. So um, first of all oh so much to talk about with this but basically uh, two things. So Saturn and Pisces is a time period of again about two and a half years of resolution. So by late 2025 2026 so much is going to have healed in the world so much is going to have resolved structures that have needed to be healed will be resolved and so much of it of what we're seeing right now is an emotional healing an emotional kind of again just like with the fear stuff letting go of of what we're afraid of individually and also collectively um a lot of justice will be served uh, a lot of what, what is Saturn all about? It's about structures. So society in general is is going through this kind of healing, kind of chaotic time period of about two and a half years. <clears throat> um, that, but it, early in the process, which we are, it can be deeply chaotic, deeply painful, deeply tragic, and um, that is horrible. To say the least you know the wars happening wars happening now it's just can't even put words to that um but i do think that it's important to keep the big perspective here first of all again we can't control what goes on with other people anyone anyone doesn't even matter if it's they're super close to us you cannot control other people you can't control your spouse can't control your children can't control your best friend can't control who you work with etc um so this is important with everybody in life but it's especially important with the world because it put this knowing about this transit and the kind of the chaos that's happening in the world helps it to put in perspective as per the big picture and the big picture is i really i mean it's just logical but i also feel this i felt this intuitively for years that as saturn is was in you know capricorn and aquarius for the last five years um we were moving towards some kind of resolution and as much as there's chaos there's a resolution collectively for us emotionally i mean everything mentally physically spiritually etc and it's important what is saturn and pisces as a transit it's a, a transit that out of really every single transit we experience saturn or pisces or any combination of energies and astronomical bodies it is a time period where we have to have faith. We have to trust the invisible structures of our life. What does that mean? Trust in God, in cosmic consciousness, the universe, however you want to put it, right? With me, they're all the same thing. Um, our, our higher selves, which is like a part of the universe of God, you know, et cetera. It's like our best selves, is that divine spiritual energy, that awareness. Um, we have to trust. And yeah there is no guarantee and you know yeah we don't know exactly where we may be going or where you know what etc cetera, etc cetera. but this the opportunity here is to build our sense of spirituality stronger saturn is all about building pisces is all about spirituality as well as trusting our our instinct our, our emotional or intuition being able to like fish in the the ocean you know to feel the currents without even thinking and just to you're okay now going this way going that way etc and especially with the kind of energies that are out there right now again this is a really good opportunity to go deeper what am i afraid of you know like that fish metaphor okay time to go into the depths time to i always like to think of a scorpio this metaphor of the sunken palaces of our psyche because of course water is the ocean in general of course right water is the giant body of water that surrounds that is most of our planet 
Pisces is not that it's superficial at all, but it's mutable. So it's mutable water. So it's like a little bit more of the surface kind of, you know, that kind of general orientation um, for, I mean, it's, that's neither good nor bad. It just is what it is. You know, there are great things about that as well. Um, uh, I, I could go on and on about all the different water signs, but long story short, there's beautiful things about that. Um, it, it's in touch with the light, if you will, you know, it's, it's more spiritual, more open. Um, in certain ways that's very healing and then there's cancer energy which is like more mid you know think of like the crab right it's like more middle of the ocean going you know it's like it's not quite the surface but it's you know it's there i mean again not not to say pisces are more like water signs are not superficial in general um you could also say pisces is like kind of intersecting with the okay it doesn't matter long story short scorpio is the depths okay it's like the the sunken floor it is the absolute bottom of the ocean and um i always like to think of this metaphor with this and i wrote this in the book uh for the scorpio section of course um is we have to explore our own sunken palaces you know and of course that's a metaphor for our unconsciousness our, our heart um, and we have to clear out the darkness room by room. We have to face our fears. We have to light it up and then discover the riches that are there. Again, going with that theme, coming full circle, we have to face our fears to be able to get the great treasures of life. Uh, if we always are just going in circles, we're not going to be able to move to somewhere new. And if we're not moving somewhere new, we're not going to gain um, in all respects. I mean more specifically like emotional gain, even spiritual gain. But I mean, you know, sure, fi financially as well or whatever. Um, so long story short we all at this time period with saturn and pisces we just have to trust yes there's chaos in the world there's always chaos but i mean there's some serious chaos in the world but my interpretation of it anyways is there over the course of the next couple of years there's going to be a resolution there's going to be a taking care of the past life chapter which is almost 30 years on this planet that's the collective consciousness chapter and preparing you know it's like resolving so it's not like it's not like oh 2026 everything's just gonna click it's like no, no no over the course of the next couple of years there's gonna be great progress in this regard and um it's preparing the way for the next 30 year cycle of saturn moving through aries all the way through the zodiac until pisces again 30 years from now so that helps a lot just to keep that perspective because that helps to understand okay this is just a phase no this isn't just going to be like life for forever i'm actually as tragic and as horrific and i could cry thinking about it of what's happening in parts of the world overall i'm actually very optimistic and very the the world is more interconnected than ever even with these these conflicts that have erupted over the last year and a half um people are more interconnected around the world than ever and it reminds me of like with vietnam um here in america when the tv would show what was going on in the war that changed the situation all of a sudden people were like oh hold on war is not some glorious thing like it's a fucking terrible thing we should not be doing this and it, it changed the the course of um, popular opinion and people working together to be able to make meaningful um, political change in the world so i i really am hopeful but you know we have it's been a shit show for sure um and hopefully sooner rather than later there's that resolution and as a planet we can move forward and grow in ways that right now um, are so very painfully obvious that we need to grow but that's the collective we which means you i everyone on this planet have our role to play in that collective change and it's also a process it's a matter of time so keep that in mind it's like we can't worrying about things that are out of our control is just sapping ourselves of energy of our well-being our mental emotional physical etc it makes us not sleep as well etc and um that's not helping anyone and that i mean that's unnecessary suffering it's not that we should pretend things don't exist but at a certain point it's like how much information do i need before like I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, I, how much do I information do I need in my personal life to know what's going on in the world and still stay focused on what I can control to an incredible degree, which is my own efforts, my own goals, etc. 
So I think that's important. And again, just to have faith. It's like, okay, you know, let go, let God. It's all good. I mean, it's not all good right now, but uh, John Lennon quote comes to mind. You had Venus in Virgo. And one last thing about that, and then we'll wrap this up, is uh, I, I, it sounds, I don't even know if this is like, I, well, I, th I mean, John was such a wise man, so I'm sure he, he could have said it. I don't even know if he did say it for sure. People love to attribute quotes to people um, that they didn't necessarily say, but uh, it's all right. This is what John said. Allegedly, it's all right in the end. If it's not all right, you're not at the end of it. It's like, yeah. So things will resolve. We will be able to move forward. But um, in the meantime, we just have to have faith. And especially during this kind of time period where there's so much water and earth energy, we're going deeply inwards. Uh, just have to have faith and focus on our own lives and consciousness and making our own lives the beautiful garden that it can be because that is what makes a difference in the world eventually you know everybody's energies put together uh there's one last thing i was going to say what was it um i feel like i had to do with venus and Vir oh just that you know venus and virgo can be brutal with self-confidence i would say out of all the energies it's actually probably the most challenging for self-confidence there's other energies that like can be as well but um it can just like pick our self-esteem apart so just be gentle with yourself be mindful of that there's always room for improvement in life about everything bigger muscles you know this that the other whatever and and that's great to approach that with the venus and virgo gifts of being very real with ourselves okay what do we need to focus on how do we reach that etc but the moment that there's negative emotion attached to that either the analysis or the the actions of bettering ourselves the moment that there's negative emotions, then we need to be gentler with ourselves and talk ourselves through, you know, we need to talk to ourselves like we're talking to a child because we are, <laughs> is our inner child, you know, our, our thoughts, our words to each other and to ourselves. Um, just be gentle with yourself. It's really important during this time. Again, we're nearing the end of Venus and Virgo transit, but it's just as important now and for the next several days as it has been for the last couple of weeks. As always, I'm doing readings, info in the about section to book reading with me. Infinite love to you, my friends. Namaste. Peace.